Hi everybody, I have to make this short and brief as I can because my camera doesn't stay on as long as I'd like it to. But uh, I want to do a video on, well, this topic is just so large and I know that I'm about a couple weeks late about it, but better late than never. I just wanted to sit back and listen to everything before I made a video about this. And it's probably going to be a two-parter. Uh, because the video I tried to make for it before, I tried to do it with my camera phone, and it didn't come out the way I wanted it to, so i got to do that one again. I'm going to make this one briefly, briefly, about the thoughts and opinions of Ted Nugent on Trayvon Martin. You know, when I was a kid, I used to go over to my grandmom's house, and at my grandmom's house, uh, my cousins were teenage boys at the time, and they used to have this big picture, poster rather, of Ted Nugent up in their bedroom. In fact, it was about as big as my Godspell poster, probably even a little bit bigger. Then again, I was small, so it may have looked big to me, but it, it was huge. It was basically huge. And I remember that poster. He had uh, lightning coming, em coming out, emanating from his fingertips and it was coming out of his guitar and uh, 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 oozing from his aura and when I was a kid to me next to Michael Jackson I thought that there was something unusual, weird, maybe even dare I say it, cool about this guy he seemed really cool back then. So what the fuck happened? Why is he now a big, blow-hearted, attention-seeking, attention-grabbing, jackass, jerk hole who will say anything and anything as long as it's outrageous so everybody can get some attention on him for a few minutes out there. What's the matter? Is he mad because cat scratch fever just isn't relevant anymore? Is that what his problem is? What the fuck is wrong with you, Ted? This was somebody's child. A dead child. This child is never going to get to do the things that he could have done to become the person that he could have grown into. I don't give a damn what people say about, oh, he did this, he did that, he did the other. Oh, really? Let's take a look back at your teenage years, everybody. Those of you who want to talk about, oh, he smoked doob, he did this, he did that, he did the other. Look back on your teenage years, folks. You all did some shit you weren't proud of. You all were smoking and drinking and drugging and fucking and doing anything and everything under the sun. So none of you got any right to say anything about this kid and what he did when you needed to be looking back on what you've done. Because everybody got to an answer for their own past. And especially you, Ted. I'm not even going to give you the respect of calling you Mr. Nugent because that just sounds too respectful for your ass. And back in those days when I used to see that poster, I'm quite sure that when I was looking at that poster as a kid, you were probably in your dressing room, once again, drinking and drunken and fucking and doing anything you wanted to do. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think Wikipedia says one of the young women that you fuck, you actually adopted so you could fuck her, which I don't understand that. I don't know why anybody would want to do something like that, but you did. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong and I apologize, but I really don't think I am because I know I've read that. And I know Wikipedia can be written by anybody, but hey, I've read that before on other places besides Wikipedia. Excuse me. So, you have no right to sit and talk and sit in judgment about anybody. And Stevie Wonder has more class in his blind eyes than you have in your whole entire bald-headed, small-dicked body. 
And yes, I went there. I don't care how many women you have banged in your lifetime. I would not be a bit surprised if you're really at this particular time coming up short. And we all know that the ones who have to blow the biggest, who have to say the most shit, is the ones who are really insecure and are really, really lacking in themselves. I don't understand what happened to you. You used to be a cool dude. You know, I can even look past the days when you was hanging around having your picture taken with Sarah Palin. I can even get over that. But this, this is somebody's kid. And just for sake of argument, you know, that could have been any kid that night. It was dark. And he had a hood on. What would have happened if this fat pig thought that the kid was up to no good, as he said in the tape? Turned out to be white. Oh, but he probably would have turned his little fat ass around and walked back to his car. Oh, and that's another thing. When it comes to the jury making the stupidest brainless call of all times, let me remind you, you let this fool go, and you let him have his murder weapon back, knowing full well that the police told him to stay in your vehicle. Don't get out of the car. Don't approach the person. Let us handle it. That was said by the cops, and this fool chose to ignore it. And that automatically made him guilty. But I should have known it was going to be like this. In fact, I knew it was going to be like this. But a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, pointed out something very true. That when it comes to George Zimmerman, he may be free, but not really. He'll never be free. Because he will always have to look over his shoulder for the rest of his life. So in the end, nobody really wins in all of this. Why would you say something like that? Something like that about a kid who was just going to get candy. And I don't give a damn how tall he was. I don't give a damn how much he weighed. I don't give a damn what he did in school. The fact remains that he was under 18. He was still a minor. And all he was doing was going to the store and buying candy. And he was on his way back home to his dad's house, who he was visiting. You gotta get over this bullshit, people. It is almost 2014. And instead of going forward, we're going backward. We're going backward with people's thinking. And blowhards like Ted Nugent don't help. So Ted, here's a piece of advice. If your instincts tell you to say something publicly, Maybe you should do the opposite and not say anything at all. Maybe you should shut the fuck up. Maybe you should clam up for a change. If you get a bright idea in your head that you just have to speak on a certain relevant topic, knowing you and that little peanut-sized brain of yours Maybe, just maybe, you should take and shut the fuck up. Keep it closed. Zip it, lock it, and throw it away. Don't say anything. Because you're not helping yourself. 
You keep making yourself look like the biggest jackhole that you are. And the sad thing is, for me, this person, I'll never be able to see you as that cool figure ever again. Never. You'll never be cool to me anymore. But I mean, hey, my little opinion don't amount to much in the grand scheme of things. But, once again, the next time you feel the urge to speak, shut it. I'll be back with part two. Hopefully soon. Got to get over this racial shit, people. Got to get over this. It's, 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 we're in, we're going in, we're getting ready to go into the second decade of, we're in the second decade of the new millennium. We're getting close to 2020, y'all. We are, what? Six years and maybe four some months away from 2020. And we're still acting a damn fool over skin pigment. Get over it, people. Gotta get over it.